have any idea how hard it is to build a combat robot? Ah! So I decided to build a one pound combat robot by the name of Vector. Yes, that Vector. He was my inspiration. In fact, I got to this point about a year ago and I thought to myself, I had seen this super cool show called BattleBots and I was like, you know what? It would be absolutely amazing if I could actually build something like that. And I had already been watching the, the TV show for a number of years. And I thought, you know what? Let's look it up. Let's see how much this would actually cost. And then I realized that it would cost thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars to actually make. And I realized that would be way too much money. So then I got curious and I decided, you know what? Why don't I just look up tiny battle bots on YouTube? So I did. And I pressed search. And my tiny brain then exploded due to a tiny bot named Jesus. Cheese. No, Cheesecake. And then I realized this may actually be possible to build a tiny battle bot on a scale that I've never seen before. So do you know what this means, brain? Like what? I can build a tiny battle bot! So then I got to work. I started to draw everything out, and I decided, you know what would be a great frame would be Minotaur. So after that setback, I realized I'm gonna have to redesign yet again. And I thought, okay, you know what? This is way too much weight. I don't know how, how to get this whole thing to work. The finger tech bar is for some reason really heavy, even though it's only 60 grams, but I don't know how to make it work. And everything is on fire. And the, this, 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 I'm making this like two, like four days away from the actual event, and this is not okay. And... So I decided to take a break, like two weeks back then. This was like eight months ago. So I decided to take a step back. I decided to redesign the bot again. And I thought, okay, maybe this is great. But at the same time, this isn't gonna work. This is gonna, this is it's just not gonna work, okay? It's not, it's not going to work. I don't know how to make the finger tech bar work with my setup because for some reason, finger tech bar is just really heavy. And why is it heavy? I don't know. It's just, it's 60 grams. So the whole bot's supposed to be under 254 grams. Yet somehow it is the heaviest part of the bot. And that doesn't make sense. So I, 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 so at that point, I took a break. I took like two weeks and saw BattleBot season nine or eight or whatever, which one it was, I don't know. But all I remember is I saw one particular bot compete and I knew exactly what type of design I wanted to do. I saw Riptide on the 250 pound stage that is BattleBots, I realized I needed to go in that direction. And this is the first complete version. And then I decided to redesign it again and again and again and again and so many times, oh my gosh. To where I felt comfortable enough to actually compete at my first competition. And to be completely honest, I was 100% prepared and totally did not build my BattleBot on the drive over to the event. And here's how that went. Nice. There we go, oh nice. Oh! And this is how the best one went. At this point, I actually realized that this part of my bot and this part of my bot are supposed to actually be attached to one another. And that's not good. Oh, oh wow. So then I just realized, you know what? This is the loser's bracket. I have nothing to lose. Let's go. Now at this event, I actually learned some pretty valuable lessons. First, my drive kept dying on me every single time and I was using nylon for my gears because I thought that was a good idea. So after this event, I had to do some more a redesign, which are obviously suffering. at this point, my favorite thing to do. Agony. First, my bot had absolutely terrible steering and general control. 
So I had, did the only logical thing and completely redesigned the entire drive system, this time using pulleys and not gears. So up to this point, I was just having fun. But with this redesign, I decided to get serious. And at this point, I had redesigned something that I felt was actually genuinely competitive. I felt like this version was actually going to win something. Then my dad came over and looked at my design and here's how that conversation went. <laughs> Three months later, after a complete redesign and my bank account drained, I introduced to you Vector 6.0. And yeah, you may be wondering what happened in Vector versions 3 to 5. Well, they had to be completely scrapped after the whole metal idea came in. So let me give you the specs. Vector now has two 7075 aluminum main rails that are designed to be both hold the main weapon and also act as the main frame of the whole bot. On top of that, it will also have two top and bottom plates that are built out of carbon fiber. It also has a blade of armor on the sides here, here, and here. And when it comes to electronics, it's actually fairly simple. It has two main drive motors from Repeat Robotics that are brushless and also planetary gear, so that's fun. I also have a dual brushless ESC from Repeat Robotics as well. Then I have a pulley going from these to the front wheel. So technically it's a four wheel drive. But for the receiver, I have a micro receiver being powered by the main ESC. And the main weapon is actually powered by a 2004 3000 KV brushless motor that has a one to one pulley system to the main weapon and a 40 amp ESC, meaning that this can actually spin up fairly quickly. All this is being powered by a 384S bat. Now you may be thinking 3000 KV on a 4S motor, that kind of seems a little bit high. Yes and no, but mainly because I want to be able to have the upper speeds if I need I don't plan on going full throttle unless there's another bot that has an extremely high KV motor or an extremely high tip speed. And up to this point, I've been kind of avoiding the main thing, trying to save it for last. Well, here it is. This is the 92 millimeter wide, 135 gram, 15 millimeter bite, grade five titanium egg beater, which after doing some calculations, accounting for air resistance, I believe will spin at around 28 to 30,000 RPM. If you want to see this thing actually compete, I'll be at Robo Games 2024 in San Jose, California, competing in the Antweight class. And to be honest, it would be my dream to actually fight against Cheesegate. 